What's up, everybody? Welcome to Kind of Funny Games Daily for Friday, July 28th, 2017. I'm one of your hosts, Greg Miller, alongside the pure one, Tim Geddes. Let Tim host. I didn't do the at today. Yeah, Keeping no, on your no toes. You never know what's going to happen. What's happening. This is a very interesting shirt. It is. Reptar. Yeah, Reptar. I know. No, no. I, I enjoy it. I like it. Mm -hmm. uh, you were upset, I think, when another fan wore this, right? I wasn't upset. I was like happy that yeah. many fans. Sure. Actually, this was from a friend. A fan sent this to me. Oh, yeah. they're keeping it My going. My boy Will. Yeah. From Chicago. We know Will. Yeah. Will goes to a lot of stuff. He does. Yep. He has that afro. Yep. He was featured in the Kind of Funny Live 2 intro. Exactly. It's true as well. Yeah. Will, so good Will's man. famous. He's a good man. Will, you're a good man. Uh, if you didn't know, ladies and gentlemen, this is Kind of Funny Games Daily each and every day. Actually, weekday. We jump into the nerdy video game news you need to know about. Getting really dirty with it, discussing it with you, answering your questions, going through your bad PSN names and all that. If you like it, you can watch us record it live over at twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames. But we don't look at the chat. The only way to be part of the show is, of course, to go to kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong. Tell us what we screw up as we screw it up so at the end of the show we can correct all our mistakes and atone. Uh, you can also watch, of course, youtube.com slash kindoffunnygames where we post it each and every day. Or... Listen on podcast services of your choice, but remember, no matter where you get it, it would mean a lot if you went and rated us on the other platforms and subscribed there, even if you never intend to use it. Also, remember that over on YouTube.com slash games right now, a new Patapon Let's Play is up. It's me trying to show Kevin why you fucking millennials should like Patapon, because no one in the fucking goddamn kind of funny slack wanted Patapon. Made me very upset. Remember, there's also going to be a Twitch stream, twitch.tv slash games Monday morning, 9.30 Pacific time, before the kind of funny morning show, where I'll play some more Patapon with you, show you how much progress I've made over this weekend. But for now, let's begin the show with what is, and forever will be, the Roper Report. Time for some news. There's just like a melancholy. There's a melancholy to your dudes. You know what I mean? I mean? You're not doing a bad job. It's just like, it's not, ah, you know. He had it and I just feel like it went on too long. You never you never know with Kevin. I don't, I don't know. know how long it's Oh. It just goes as long as I was, uh, you know, I just say no time rules. for some. No, there, well, there, there were ones on it. Four items on the Roper Report. A baker's dozen. Number one. We've covered on this show all week how bad Pokemon Go Fest was, and now there's a lawsuit. There's more. I'm going to read the Can IGN. this story just end? No, it can't. No, it can't, because it has to. It's they, Niantic must be dragged through the streets and beaten to show how God. badly they fucked this up. I'm going to read IGN's shit. story here. Following the disastrous events of last week's Pokemon Go Fest, a few dozen event attendees are banding together to sue developer Niantic, according to Thomas Zimmerman, the lawyer organizing the lawsuit. The attendees feel that Niantic did not provide the experience that was advertised and want reimbursement for travel and other expenses. As we, IGN, previously reported, Pokemon Go Fest was a bit of a mess. The game was unplayable for most attendees, prompting Niantic to offer ticket refunds and in-game credit as an apology. However, the attendees who created this lawsuit are seeking reparations for their other expenses as well. Quote, we're not seeking any relief with respect to the failure to get legendary Pokemon because Niantic is offering that, Zimmerman told Polygon. But Niantic is not offering to refund people's travel expenses for coming to Chicago. Most of the people came from out of state, many from other countries. Tim? First off, no shit. They're not refunding people's travel accommodations. That doesn't make any sense at all. Mm -hmm. Having said that, you can sue anyone for anything. Sure. So, the Zimmerman dude sounds like he's just like, alright, there's there's something here I can latch on to. I can get my name out there. I can definitely you know, cause some shit, stir up some stuff. Sure. And I think that's exactly what's happening. I think this is not going to go much farther than this. I don't think they really have much of a leg to stand on. And I imagine the moment that this gets in front of any actual court, they're just going to be like, are you kidding me that you're wasting our time on this? Here's what I would say. I mean, I, I think there's, I mean, I'm not a legal expert, as I know. It's going to shock many of you mm. out there. I think they have a little bit of a case in the way that, yeah, people went there for this experience and they had this in this intention and that didn't happen. And so, yeah, if I came from the UK, I'd be super pissed or from another state or from another country. But I think when it comes down to what actually was promised and what mm -hmm. did they get and what didn't they get and how did they reimburse people and the yeah. fact that they reimbursed the actual ticket to the thing. Sure. Like your travel and how long it took you to get somewhere that has nothing to do with whether or not you bought a ticket to a show. Yeah. I feel like the, the extent to which that ends is you bought the ticket to the show. If they were funded the ticket to the show, which they did. Yeah. That's that. My counterpoint to my own point or whatever, I think digging deeper is I agree with you. I don't think this is going to go further. And I, I, I like your perspective on it because you are such a live event person. Whether you know, like, are you traveling to your QN5? Did I get it? Mm -hmm. yeah, QN5. Okay, yeah. I always want to uh, nail it. That QN5. Uh, going there and seeing them and stuff. And then, of course, you are the, you know, the lifeblood behind Kind of Funny Live. I feel like 
there's a social contract, let alone a real contract in the fine print of every ticket you buy, right? Where this ticket is or isn't refundable, mm -hmm. subject to change, all this yep. different stuff. That's the contract you enter into, right? So if I, even if it, well, think of it this way, and it's happened a million times, right? I traveled from Florida to see Kanye West in New York, and he canceled that show. Yeah. That sucks. I get refunded for the ticket I bought from them, but not in That has else. happened to me in, in a different way, where I bought a Kanye West ticket, and he canceled the show. Yeah. And I was super bummed. Luckily, I was only traveling to San Jose, so that wasn't that far. Sure. So I didn't need to make accommodations and stuff. Yeah. They refunded the ticket. That's the end of that story, right? But had somebody booked flights to go across the country and that were to happen, it is what it is. That's a risk. Lincoln take, Park right? recently, and granted, it's a different scenario because it's a death. They just started a tour, had mm -hmm. to cancel mm -hmm. the tour. They have to regroup and figure out what they're doing and all that. Yeah. But it's just like, yeah, I'm sure there was people that booked um, hotels and flights and entire trips around at certain dates and being at certain shows, you don't get refunded for that stuff. Right. Like you just get refunded for the actual product that you're you're buying if you didn't get the right uh, thing. And that's even up to them to decide. And they, they handled that, right? So again, you can attempt to sue anyone for anything. Yeah. Well, what I think is interesting about it is I, I would venture to guess that there's already court precedent on this. This isn't the first thing that's ever been canceled or that's gone the poorly. Whole fire festival situation. Exactly. And so I think that what's interesting is the fact that they're arguing about they didn't provide the experience that was advertised. Not even so much that, all right, cool, you canceled your, your event didn't work. The, I didn't get the Pokemon, blah, blah, blah. And like the fact that they call out, they know they've been reimbursed for the Pokemon. Mm -hmm. The experience that was advertised, which I guess is beyond just buying the ticket. They're saying, yeah, thank you. What's up, Bion? Where they're saying that you weren't running around with your friends, you weren't in these legendary raids, you weren't doing this stuff. It's flimsy as hell, don't get me wrong, but I wonder, number one, if it's just going to end up being settled out of court. Because Nancy's yep. like, just let's get fucking done with this, let's not go that far. If it is a hangers on thing, or if, yeah, you'd fight this all the way through and see what happens. Yeah, I mean, I feel like this is such an example of a headline for the sake of being a headline that this is, it's going to end up costing people more money than it's worth to deal with this. Mm. Uh, whether it's Zimmerman having to spend money or. Uh, Neantic having to spend money that it's going to reach a point where it's like it's easier to just spend a certain amount and shut people up sure uh, than to move forward right and I guess that would be the thing too is, is, is a class action suit you, Zimmerman's gathering up these people how many of those attendees are really going to go through the the brouhaha of joining up with this to go do that yeah it's like whenever you get those like you open PSN up your things or that or you open up your mail and I'll get like a check for seven dollars because I'm in some class action lawsuit because way back in the day I worked at Walmart once and here you go exactly One? okay yeah and I feel like that will affect people but even then this is much a much smaller thing is how many people actually bought tickets to this how many people are upset about it how many people you know just keeps getting smaller and smaller of course uh but yeah it's it's an interesting thing and i i feel like niantic does have a, a leg to stand on to fight because not everyone didn't get the advertised experience only some people didn't get the advertised experience yeah they obviously refunded people based on that some people yeah um so i don't know it's interesting but like i said i i do not think this is going to get much farther than this because there's no way that it gets taken all the way through where niantic actually loses this and i feel like the only option when Yantic loses is if they just settle and fucking pay, sure. pay them to shut them up. In which they will. Which is very likely. Yeah, just get it on, move on. But I, I also think there's a chance that they don't because it it's going to start costing these people too much money to, for it to even be worth it. Well, but uh, do they see that? Well, they know, you know, I mean, Thomas Zimmerman, right? And like, who knows? Maybe it's, you know, he gets a portion of the earnings at the end, one of those things. He's just a lawyer, so he's just collecting people. And if he's just doing the legwork, in the end, he hopes, you know, maybe it is. Maybe this is one of those throwaway lawsuits. Who knows? Number two on the Roper Report. I filed this one under no duh, but I think it's interesting to discuss. Uh, I titled it, When are Metroid Prime 4 and Pokemon Switch coming? Because GameSpot put up an article that's basically like, whoa, Metroid Prime 4 might not be coming in 2018. To which I was like, did we ever really think that was going to happen? <laughs> Following its most recent earnings call, Nintendo released a document of supplementary information that included a list of release dates for all the company's announced titles. Two of its E3 reveals, the new Yoshi and Kirby games, are still slated to launch next year, but the document lists Metroid Prime 4's release date as TBA. This doesn't necessarily preclude the game from uh, being released in 2018, but it does cast some doubt on it. Additionally, the, the console's core Pokemon RPG is listed as 2018 or later, implying that it may sleep, slip out of the calendar year as well. This isn't entirely surprising, however, uh, when the Pokemon Company president announced the title during Nintendo's E3 presentation, it stated it may not release for a year or more. Did, did you're Mr. Nintendo, and I know Pokemon 
I, I remember that being quoted, but like, did you think Metroid Prime 4 no. was coming? So what's interesting about this is uh, it's kind of confusing because I saw the documents that they're talking about. And yeah. there was different ones for North America and Japan. And a lot of the dates are kind of mismatched and weird and say different things. Mm -hmm. uh, so that gets a little bit confusing. An example is uh, Rap Mario Cross Rabbit or Mario Plus Rabbids yeah. Kingdom, Kingdom Battle. Battle. Uh, isn't coming out in Japan until next year, until Oh, really? Yeah, wow. and we're getting it uh, here. And we're how things month, are labeled, yeah. whether it's first Three party month. or third party, it differs between gotcha. the territories. Um, so with this, the, there is some some weird wishy-washy things of, of dates, or at least time frames. Um, in addition to that, there's a Fire Emblem game that they didn't add here that is 2018. Okay. So there is, they're starting to stack up there. They, it's pretty much once a month there is a game coming out from now till January. And then after that, it's just ambiguous 2018 dates for Kirby Yoshi and uh, Fire Emblem. When it comes to Pokemon and, and Metroid, at E3, all that we got when the Metroid trailer played, it didn't say 2018 in it, did it? I don't think so. No, God, no. Yeah, no, 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 no. it's just a Metroid Prime 4 and it ended on the and logo. And it was that thing of like, we're working on it. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, that game was at least two years, at least two years away. We'll see. I don't know. I mean, I don't think it's coming in 2018, yeah. but I, I don't think that that's, I don't think that there's no chance. And I mean, it's it's complicated. We still don't really know the exact team working on it. I bet they don't either. But I mean, they, but they might though. Like that's the thing is Nintendo's weird when it comes to oh, its internal Nintendo's teams weird. and what they've been doing and with the Wii U having been what it was like yeah. these teams are working on something mm. retro has been working on something okay and okay. if it's not metro prime 4 how close is retro's game and how close is metroid prime like I, we don't know the level of completion yeah for the trailer oh we just saw uh, an image it might be a lot more done than we think or it might be just as uh, incomplete as we imagine it yeah, is. yeah so i don't i don't know but yeah I would not expect it in 2018 at all. I just think that it's like, all right, it's going to come. Pokemon's where it gets more interesting to me that the fact that they say 2018 or later, because when they announced Pokemon in the uh, the E3 briefing, yeah, yeah. that seemed even more incomplete to me. Mm -hmm. well, that was just him saying, yeah, there's going to be a mainline Pokemon RPG, period, Yeah, in, in the coming years. So the fact that, that 2018 is even in that conversation, it's like, oh, crap, that sounds like that's a goal for them then, at least in Japan. Sure. So... Do you think that speaks to it being not a giant step in terms of Pokemon? It is and uh, not up res, but it is the a Pokemon game we already know and some love. Uh many love. Uh I don't I don't imagine that the Switch Pokemon mainline game is going to be drastically different. Mm. I do think it's going to be a huge step forward in terms of scope and graphics and um how busy the world is but i don't think it's going to be a different type of game i don't think it's going to be an mmo i don't think it's going to be um i think it's still going to follow the structure of a pokemon sure game, right so i don't think that it necessarily and coming especially coming off the 3ds ones the 3ds pokemon games are already such a step above even the ds games going from 2d to 3d that i imagine the switch is going to be just a, an iteration on the 3ds games right mm -hmm. so I don't think that the 2018 it would be crazy, but I don't see it happening either. But at least in America, in Japan, I can see it coming out. Uh, but with Metroid, I don't think it's coming in 2018. But I, th I think it's possible. I don't. Nintendo is in such a weird place right now with the Switch and with how well it's selling. A couple of days ago, you talked about the numbers. Yeah, those numbers are blowing my mind. Oh, yeah. I think a very important thing to look at is Arms. Arms sold over a million. Units. What was it 1.6, 1.8? I forget. Uh, one I think of those. it was 1.2. Okay. Uh, but kind of funny.com slash? You're wrong. Uh, but Let again, me. that was just limited based on uh, how long it's been out and what didn't oh, even yeah. count the full month of it. Yeah. That is it was very, very, very impressive like two weeks for we a new, a new, new IP, IP that's like on a brand new system that is niche, very yeah. niche. It's a fighting game in a world where there's fighting games coming out left and right. And it's another multiplayer game on a system that pretty much exclusively has multiplayer games with Zelda being the exception. So for it to sell that well, that is a sign to Nintendo that their strategy is working. Oh, yeah. Put out one game, let's focus on it. Even Capcom put out the the one month that Nintendo's had that didn't have a first party game, uh, a big one yeah. was May, and they just totally missed it. And May had uh, Ultra Street Fighter Two, the new challenge or the final challengers or whatever the fuck it was, sure, uh, which was the biggest cash grab in the Switch's history <laughs> thus far. Yeah, um, where they took a five-year-old PSN XBLA game um, added a shitty motion control uh, option and sold it for uh, a full price that was more than it ever cost before. Like, just ridiculous. Even that Capcom yesterday came out and said sold super well. 
estimates put it at about 500,000. Wow. 500,000 for what I just described is insane. People want to buy games. People want to play games on the Switch. Yeah, it's almost a joke at this point uh, when people tweet out, man, this game would be perfect on the Switch. Oh, I wish this was on the Switch. Everything, every fucking game now. is it's like <laughs> For some reason, people would say it's perfect on the Switch. Sure. People want to play games on this system. And seeing these games month after month sell as well as they are, I am so stoked that I think this means we might actually get F-Zero. We might actually get another shot at Star Fox that they don't fuck up. Like, I think that Nintendo's like, oh shit, if we treat things with care and we make every game once a month an event, we can keep the shit rolling anything. and we can bring back Pilot Wings. We can bring back Wave Race. We can bring back Luigi's Mansion. Like, these Hell games that people... Hell yeah, fucking Toad. Toad like, never went away. Captain Toad never went away in this treasure tracker. I'm just, I'm excited about it. And I think it's uh, very good for a healthy Nintendo to exist. And I think that they have a very good strategy going right now. You talk about Capcom and what the success they saw. Do you see, or do you think you'll see other third party publishers jumping in here and actually trying to do stuff? I mean, I think that the, that this Capcom thing is definitely um, an early indicator that third party games can perform well and make it worth it uh, to make games for the switch. Yeah. However, how I describe Street Fighter says a lot. Yeah. That didn't require too much work. Yeah. Um, so it being a success is very relative to the conditions under which uh, that game was made. I, what does this mean? I, do I think we'll see Resident Evil 4 come to the Switch at some point? Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, mm -hmm. that's what I, I kind of gotcha. think is going to happen a bit more. I think that uh, Mario and Rabbids, like, depending on the success of that game, which. Let's play going up. Let's just. Com slash. You know, let's put on our fucking psychic thing and look into the crystal ball. It's going to do well. Yeah. You know, I think with more things like that, and granted, that is a partnership with Mario, so it's a little bit. Yeah, skewed. Skewed, but that's still a third party game. Yeah. I do and you hope that would that, also open the eyes of other publishers. Of like, absolutely. Oh, well, Nintendo's playing nice. Where could we fit in these yeah. new characters? What and, could we and Nintendo, with the numbers we've seen, with what they're talking about, about upping their the production and trying to get their original plan was $10 million, uh, out in the wild by uh, next March, which yeah. is the, the fiscal year. Now they're trying to get $14 million total. That's We're getting to sizable amounts. Like those are That's real yeah. numbers that you can put a game out on. And when you go back to the original question about Metroid, they could put out Metroid at any time. It's going to sell what it's going to sell, right? Yeah. Pokemon is a different story. Pokemon, they should hold on as long as possible until they have the maximum amount of systems out in the wild because they're going to sell for every system that exists. I think three fourths of them are going to buy Pokemon. And it's a system seller it's, as well. It, and, right? it's, and it is a system seller. So like by the time this mainline Pokemon game comes out, that system, the, the Switch needs to be out of its production um, slump. Yeah. And it needs to be readily available for the people that want to buy it. So it's going to be an interesting time. Okay. While we're in this Nintendo deluge, I want to jump over to John Boy, who wrote in to kindoffunny.com slash KFGD with a big old question for big old Timmy. He says, is the new Nintendo 2DS XL a good investment? I've never had a DS before. My son is two, and I want to get him into games with Nintendo like I did as a child. Uh, I also would like to have a handheld to play during the small breaks I have as a dad slash full-time worker. But... Then there's the Switch. It has less games and costs about twice as much. Would I be stupid to buy this new DS, or should I just bite the bullet and go with the Switch? Would I'm sorry, which would be the better investment given my scenario? John Boy. What do you feel? It's interesting. I don't like the Nintendo 2DS, the new Nintendo 2DS. Uh -huh. um, I feel like it's... It feels cheap, and the shoulder buttons are blocked by the hinge. Yeah, you, uh, we did a games uh, cast. Games cast yeah, I right. talked about it, really, and that really bothers me. Having said that, it is a great system. Like, there's a vast library of games at this point mm. that ha that if you haven't ever had a DS, like there's there's a lot to get into there, both from the DD from the DS family and the 3DS family. So that's great. However, the Switch is the future. The yeah. Switch is not something that Nintendo is going to give up on, based on everything I just said. It has a very vibrant an amazing future coming up and uh you, you being a dad wanted to play with your kid and all that i think that it would be a very wise investment to get the switch get yourself a switch so that you guys can play together because the amount of i the switch brings people together we've seen it and it makes us all want to play multiplayer games when i see one of you guys playing i have that thought of like should i bust mine out right now yeah like can we play really quick whatever it is yeah seeing kevin go from zelda to mario kart to splatoon it's like this is kevin we're talking about you yeah. know like that he sucks it's cool that, oh, yeah. no, that cool. the switch is is 
you know, making people want to play games more and sure. go out of their comfort zone, like playing Splatoon. For me personally, yeah, I think it's a no-brainer to go for the Switch. I mean, I understand. He, I, my son is two, and I want to get him into games with Nintendo like I did as a child. Well, then I think Mario Odyssey looks pretty awesome. That seems like a great place to start with. Hey, this is Mario, and let's mm-hmm. play. Eventually, Virtual Console will come to it, and you'll be able to play the classics. Granted, you could do that on 3DS now, but... Who cares? You could also get the NES Classic, the SNES Classic. There's a million different ways if you want to give those experiences right now. I mean, he's two. I don't think that's where his motor skills are yet, but I'm yeah. not, I'm, not, I'm no doctor of children. But Mario Kart. Mario Kart's there. Uh, and like you're saying, like, I mean, snipper clips, like breaking mm-hmm. off those two controllers and sitting there playing. And then for you, you want a handheld as a father to play on your, you know, between, on your breaks of being a dad or being a full-time worker. Yeah, the Switch is perfect the Switch for that. Is the that's what it is. Get Absolutely. the Switch. It goes both ways. Number three, let's jump to the land of PlayStation. Specifically, PlayStation's across the pond. Uh, PlayStation Plus prices are going up over in Australia and Europe. Mm. Uh, starting August 31st, the, for 31st, 31st, the annual PlayStation Plus subscription will cost uh, 50 euros. No, what's the L? No, 50 pounds, 60 euros, and $80 Australian. That's an increase, respectively, of 10, 10, and 10. Quarterly memberships are going up by, by 5, 5, and 6. So it'd be a new price of uh, uh, 20 pounds, 25 euros, and then $34 Australian. Monthly memberships currently cost six pounds, uh, seven euros, $10 Australian will go up seven, eight, and 11. Uh, a lot of people freaked out about what does this mean for the U.S.? It's important to point out that the, last, the U.S. increased their prices in September of 2016. Uh, right now, it's 60 bucks for 12 months, $25 for three months. So jumping back there, annual prescription, I mean, it's it's negligible it's right there in the same same thing right so pounds 50 60 euros and 80 australian versus 60 here in america but alex wrote in uh and a lot of you wrote in about this i put alex's down because i was like oh man people aren't that mad about it and then all the rest of the responses were mad but they were all kind of saying the same thing but alex is not representative of the group alex writes in and says well first off you wrote in kind of funny.com slash kfgd just like you can says hey Happy Friday, Greg and Tim. Grim. I got an email today telling me that my PlayStation Plus membership is increasing in price. And then he goes back to being pounds. So $39.99 to $49.99 annually in the UK. This doesn't really bother me. I'm still planning on enjoying the online play and PlayStation Plus free games each month. But I wonder if you think this might mean that there'll be anything new for PlayStation Plus users in the near future. Could it be integrating PS Now services as Danny and Greg were discussing in the previous podcast? Could we be getting free PlayStation VR games as part of our monthly games? Or could we be paying extra to finally be able to change our names? Or maybe... Do they not need to do anything differently because this is just online? what online services need to cost these days? Love all you do. Kind of funny team, Alex. That, Alex, hits on what a lot of people were upset about. It's going up in price, and most of the responses were, okay, I don't like paying more, but okay. The main thing was like, why? There was no explanation. There's no statement. One of the questions was talking about the fact that you go to the PlayStation uh, UK Twitter, you go to the PlayStation blog over there. It was buried on the blog. It wasn't there. There was no, hey, everybody, we're increasing this because of this. Mm. And even if and so many people were like, similar to what you're saying, or may, to what Alex said, maybe do they not need to do anything differently because this is just what online services need to cost these days. That also is an okay statement. I feel like this was a not a huge bungle, but it's definitely like, we lost the message here. Hey, your things are going up because we have gone in through and it actually costs more for us to do this than we thought it did because we're going to add something because like they, when you don't give anybody a reason, they get really yeah. angry. Yeah. I mean, him asking like, do we think that this means that there's something in the future that's going to be added? The answer is no to that. I mean, yeah. of course something will be added in the, eventually, but if they had something, they would have waited right. to be able to say it's going up because of this thing, which yep. makes it sound worth it. And it definitely we're counted. including PlayStation now in there. So now we're going to go up 10 bucks yeah, or whatever. Yeah, compliment exactly. Sandwich, but like in, in a different way, I forgot what the, the business term for it is, but that's what it means. Yeah. Uh, where it's like, you got to like pack the bad with some good. Right. And I feel like it, the answer is just like, oh, this is what, not even that it does cost these days, but it's what it could cost these days. Yeah. They, they've they done market research, I'm sure, and they realized that, hey, we can get more money out of these people if we do this, so let's do it. Yeah. And I totally agree with you that they, they fucked up the message because it, this could have went over a bit better. I, I think it's a very simple message of, hey, we are increasing it. And like, to what you're saying, I'm sure part of it is we can get more. There's got to be some other thing in there just of like, it is the... 
what is the profit they're making off of PlayStation Plus? And clearly they must have seen that go down. And maybe it is the idea of, you know, some so many people do complain about the quality of PlayStation Plus games, this and mm-hmm. the other. Maybe some of the recent titles have cost more. Maybe the, the, the landscape has shifted, right? PlayStation Plus has been around many years now. I remember when Colin and I were doing this at IGN, the original breakdown, and I was making, I think, bitmap images or whatever to put into articles. Like, it's been all around a long time. So clearly the industry has shifted landscapes. Maybe indies and whoever else, third parties, are just seeing in general that they can get more for their game so why do that you need to pay out more yeah i think that's what i think it just comes out of that profit margin and again i think that's okay to say i think it's a better thing to say like playstation's doing that thing again that i don't like where and i granted this is playstation international well playstation is a company and i've talked about this before so i won't beat it at horse but playstation 4 playstation was so humble and so we are a big company but we're shu and we're adam and we're making a fun video and we're doing this and we're talking to gamers about games and here's mark cerny to talk your ear off about this and it's gonna be great and then they started going back towards playstation 3 gamers of like no no we're a corporation and we're buttoned up and the games will speak for themselves and we won't put personalities out there and i don't like seeing that happen and not that this is like the grandest case of it, but it is they're just like it's an example of it trickled down all the way of, yeah. the, of not seeing shoe on stage. Yeah, because of that, that means that information like this is put out the way that it is. Yeah, where it's like if something this small is uh, not going to be important, why would anything else bigger be important? You know, yeah. Or yeah. the opposite of that. I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Yeah, it's just one of those things like this. We're g- going up because ser- we server costs have cost more, games are costing more, whatever. Yep. I mean, yeah, then you're going to get people, oh, cry me a river PlayStation, you sold X million units and blah, blah, blah. And there was a guy in here who was like trying to do the math on how much money they've made off PlayStation 4. It's like, well, it's not that easy. But still, I think that's a better thing to have of people, oh, cry me a river. And somebody's like, well, I'm paying for this content. I understand. But it is the point. I'm sure that this is what Margaret Research showed would get the profit margins up and cause or would do the least of people canceling. Yeah. Because this is the whole thing of like, it's people look at it like, oh, that's annoying. And it's like, well, when my when it automatically renews, I won't care. Or I don't even see this anywhere and it just automatically renews and whatever. And that's why it's buried on the PlayStation blog. And that's why it's not being shouted from the rooftops because they want you to know they want the information out there, but they don't want you to think enough to actually cancel it. Mm. Final item on the Roper Report for this week. Dragon Quest Six: Echoes of an Elusive Age is coming to the West. 11. I'm an idiot. You're right. Dragon Quest 11. Sorry. Echoes of the Elusive Age. Coming West. Uh, this is according to the franchise creator in a YouTube video. Uh, it's going to be sometime in 2018. Localization work has already begun. It's going to be five languages. Uh, and then, yeah, PlayStation 4 and 3DS are out in Japan this week. Uh, Switch is going to be eventually. Uh, Tim, what's your take? Colin Moriarty's super stoked somewhere. <laughs> uh, somewhere in Santa Monica. Yeah, no. Dragon Quest, a franchise I absolutely missed out on. I mm, was a Final mm-hmm. Fantasy guy. Um, huge deal for a lot of people. Yeah. It, this Coming West is w- one of those examples of Nintendo trying to give the people what they want. Yeah. How many people are there? I don't know. I'm I'm interested in seeing this. I wonder how well it sells in North America because these are the type of games that, you know, there's a group of people that are super passionate and are yelling for and they're like, you know, get it over here, get it over here, get it over here. But it's like, is that group 100,000 people? Yeah. Is that worth the trouble of doing all this and getting it late and all this? I, I'm not sure. Uh, it must be because it's one they of those, keep doing it eventually. But I feel like with me now being invested so much in the Switch and all this d- different stuff and how much I've heard about Dragon Quest. I remember when Dragon's when at IGN when the last and correct me if I'm wrong and I, you might not be the guy for it. The last I want to say real Dragon Quest came out that was like traditional and like Charles Onyet was so excited. Like I'd put this on the Switch and kick around and see what's up. I, I'm pretty sure that's this one. Okay. Oh wait, what? I I I definitely could be wrong about. Well, this. I'm talking about the last one that came to America. The last time, oh, a, uh, last okay, time, okay. A, a I, Dragon I think Quest Dragon Quest Co- Ten was the one that was the online. Yeah, like, that was the one, one that was fake. I remember Colin always being upset about that one. Then they had builders. Dragon Quest Eight was definitely a a traditional one. Okay, we're at a point where I'm just fucking talking on my ass though. Dragon okay. Quest Nine. That's what I'm saying. Is I'm just yeah. saying is like for whatever reason, the last time a mainline this is a, this is what Dragon Quest is game came to the states. It was on a platform I didn't care about, and I was busy with something else. Mm. And now I feel like with it's it's similar to what we were talking about with Uncharted, Uncharted Two, or anything like that when the sequel comes out. And I expect it to do so much better. I, I, there's enough goodwill out there for Dragon Quest that I pop in and try it. Mm. Uh, Kazuma wrote in to kindoffunny.com slash kfgd just like you can it says dragon quest 11 has just been announced for the west for a 2018 release and i could not possibly more excited dragon quest is considered to be one of the most popular rpg franchises in japan with every entry over there selling millions of copies with more with the more recent releases of critically acclaimed japanese games in the west like persona 5 near automata final fantasy 15 tales of Brazeria, yakuza 0 are 
JRPGs finally making a slow but sure resurgence in the West. What was once a well revered genre in the West quickly fell to the wayside in the previous console generation due to the limited amount of quality console JRPG releases. Are things starting to change for the better, Tim? I don't think so. Uh, I think this goes back to what I was saying earlier where I feel like there is a very loud group and I think that critically these games are doing really well. I don't, they're selling better than expected in a lot of ways. Some of them, I mean, Final Fantasy is kind of the standout here because of the, what that franchise is and sure. how it's marketed and how you know that whole story yeah but then you look at things like like near and um, and tails and yakuza zero it's like they, they, they do very well better than expected but they're not like when people think mainstream it's like what what are the video games right now these aren't these games aren't brought up right when people start talking about what's going on it's the switch games right now it's the the, the steam games it's i mean i would definitely argue that persona's brought up and maybe it's per- just the echo chamber of who we all are that, i think that's what i'm saying is that okay. i think that these like yes these games are there was a resurgence in quality um japanese games yeah that people in the west are excited about but i think those people are us it's mm-hmm. the uses it is the echo chamber sure. of um, games journalism that are like, oh man, but you know, these are yeah, great. Persona these are did great. what a little over one million. I think it was the last thing I saw. I think the one interesting thing about his points here is he's talking about like you know, uh, selling all these copies, blah blah blah. And then he's got are they making a slow but sure resurgence in the West. What once was a well revered genre in the the West quickly fell to the wayside. Of the previous generation. I agree that last generation was weird and a switch over to Western things. But Final Fantasy fifteen. Is just finally out. That's been in production forever. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, that's one of the reasons it matters. Persona means more based on the success of Persona 4 Golden last time around, but Persona is a thing that's been around forever. Yakuza 0 isn't a JRPG. Uh, yeah, and it, neither but, is near. And, and Yakuza has been around, and so we'll just limit it to Japanese games. But Yakuza games have been around forever. Tales for, of Brazaria, sure, but Tales games have been around forever and popular here. And I think it's Tales from, with all due respect to Tales fans, I don't think Tales of Brazaria was a breakout one. I didn't hear more people talking about that than the usual Tales fans. But I think what he's saying, though, is uh, more recent releases of critically acclaimed Japanese. Japanese games. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The last couple Tales games have not been critically gotcha, acclaimed. Gotcha. Whereas people are liking Berseria and uh, you know, Near wasn't Fair reviewed point. well. Near Automata Fair is point. reviewed very well. Um, so my apologies, I dialed yeah, back. But, You're right. You're but I think right. that's what I'm talking about. So it's like if you were to compare uh, Mass Effect and its sales to these things, yeah, right. There's a, a difference there. There's a disconnect there. And I, I think that like back in the day, comparing it's like a Final Fantasy VII, where it's like that was the Mass Effect back then. Do you get my point? No, I hear. So it's like I they they're still there, but I don't think that they're there's they're rising up to still be this like. But do you huge think it's a pillar. resurgence? I think it's a resurgence based on where they were last console generation, the Japanese gaming market at least. I I just think it's again, it just they're critically better. They're better games. Mm-hmm. Like, I think that's what it is. Is that right now there are better Japanese games than there were last generation. Last generation. That's fair too. That's fair and too. I think that the the quality of the Western games has stayed fairly consistent yeah. for better or worse sure yeah there's not really like standouts whereas these are standout game well not all of them but uh you know near is a standout persona is a standout so yeah like that's i just think that the the quality is what matters the most when it comes to these japanese games because i feel like the modern gamer is not thinking about video games as being a japanese thing in the way that we did absolutely we did growing up with yeah. nintendo super nintendo or you know i guess and then playstation playstation 2 right PlayStation 3 is when Western really came in. And again, it was the Western RPG that that changed that. So. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess my I change for the better, I think. I get, yeah, I'm with you. I think it just strikes me that this is all just ebbs and flows, right? These are all just the way the industry works. And that Japan was so high for so long. And then, yeah, West came up last generation. And I think now you're seeing them both. Like, I think maybe it is even that Japan got written off. Remember when even Inafune was like, nobody's doing anything interesting over here. I don't want to, you know, and it was like, damn, that's crazy you said that. But there are interesting ideas at least getting published. Yeah, yeah I mean, it. again, looking back on it, like for these these franchises, like Final Fantasy, like 13 did not review well. It wasn't yeah. critically acclaimed. It sold good, you know, not even better than good. Mm-hmm. They made a trilogy out of it. It had to have sold enough to for them to make three of them. <laughs> Old Lightning. Know? And then Final Fantasy 14 came out and was a failure. And then over time, it became yeah they rebooted became critically yeah, yeah. Uh, acclaimed. So interesting, a loaded question. Good job, Kazuma. Tim, if I want to know what was in Mom and Grab shops today, where would I go? The official list of upcoming software across each and every platform is listed by the Kind of Funny Games Daily host each and every weekday. 
Is that my part? No. What am I supposed to do? Here? Yeah, you did it. You nailed okay. it. And then I, I do so the little jingle and then paper? I just read it. Yeah. Well, no, you, okay. like Andrew and Danny are trying to memorize it. Okay. But they keep, they, they you know, yeah. they're doing their best. Okay. I'm not, I'm not going to bust balls anymore okay, cool. from here on out about it. Out today, ladies and gentlemen, Super Cloud built on Xbox One. Hey, Pikmin on 3DS. Mm. Metopia on 3DS. Mm. Sundered on PlayStation 4 and PC, which is a roguelike. It looks interesting. Uh, it's getting like eights and sevens for reviews. I think I might try to kick the tires on this weekend, but I got pad upon, so who the fuck knows? Namco Museum on Switch, Collar Cross Malice PS4, Constructor on PlayStation 4, It's Spring Again on Vita, Rugby League Live on PlayStation, I'm sorry, Rugby League Live 4 on PlayStation 4, Cyber Complex on Xbox One, and Syndrome on Xbox One. Meanwhile, new dates for you. Monster Hunter World will release by March 2018, according to Capcom's financial thing. They put it out. They said it'll be done by the fiscal year, which would be March 2018. That's the PlayStation 4? Yeah. Monster Hunter? Yeah, game? the one they announced, 83 or whatever. And then Mage, uh, our friend Dan Edelman's uh, game, Mages of Australia, uh, August 22nd, I believe on PlayStation 4. I don't know what that means for play, uh, PC or Xbox One. The blog had it up, so I'm not sure. if it. I don't even know if it's announced for those platforms, of course, because I'm in the tank for Sony. But. Boom. Boom. Uh, deals of the day. I wrote a bunch, and then Emmett Watkins Jr. wrote into kindoffunny.com slash KFGD to take over the segment, and I just deleted everything I wrote and let him do it. Emmett Watkins Jr. says, just a PSA for shooter fans. This weekend is going to be big for fans of Doom, Titanfall 2, Overwatch, and Lawbreakers. Doom is having a free slash double XP weekend on PlayStation 4 with all of its multiplayer, including its new 6.66 update and two campaign missions <laughs> free. You like that? The full game is also $15 this weekend on PSN. So that's mirroring what happened last weekend with Xbox uh one Titanfall 2 is having a free double XP weekend with two campaign missions and all multiplayer, including its new four player co-op mode free to try. The full game is also $20 till Tuesday in Overwatch. Doomfist is finally live on consoles and lawbreakers opens um, lawbreakers open beta is live this weekend on PC and PlayStation 4. Well, thank you. Good job. Emmett. Yeah, he got Yeah, I, I didn't have the Titanfall or Overwatch updates in there. So I was like, you know what? You get it. Circle gets the square, as they say. Yeah, you remember when they say I, that? I do, I do. Tim, it's time for reader mail. Oh God, this scares me. Um, we're starting off, yeah. Uh, Nerd Fuck. XP. Don't stop looking. Don't look ahead. Nerd XP, uh, EXP actually, but Nerd Experience. Writes in and wants us to clear our mind. All right, and I thought this was a good palate cleanser as we move in answering those questions. You ready, Tim? Hey, Greg, in the ever rotating second chair. Again, Nerd EXP. You are lazy. I said Tim would be on this episode. Tim's on next on Monday's episode too, right? Or is it? Andrew? No, I'm not. Andrew's on Monday's episode. So there you go. Hey, Greg and Tim, can we play a game of which is better? Number one, Super Mario Brothers 3 so or here, Super Mario World? Thing. Clear your mind. Here's the thing, Greg. I'm just letting people know. At some point, this is going to be a segment on Gamescast yeah. that we just do with, sure. with guests. Yeah, I, know. I like this one a lot. This That's, is this is really fucking great. Good job, Go Nerdy XP. What, what was the Super first Mario one? Brothers 3 or Super Mario World? It's Super Mario World. There's no debate. No, there is a debate. Now, now, Greg, let me let me tell you. This has been something I've, I've been working on a tweet. Okay. I know that sounds like a weird thing to say. I know I, you, I I know you just, really well. I, I should know probably just I know. fucking tweet it's it. Not but I've been thinking about it, and I just haven't actually done it. 28 years of my life. Uh-huh. 28 years, Greg. And I think I finally realized that Super Mario Brothers 3 is better than World. You're a fucking idiot. And I am a fucking World guy. You're an idiot. World, I, would, I want to play the hell. I want 100% both of them for the millionth time. Sure. And do a real in-depth look at China side. But when I think about it, like Worlds just has some some issues that three doesn't, and three just has so much good, so much just distinct level design. And the levels are short but memorable. Yeah, Worlds it gets a little samey in a lot of parts, and like there's a lot of boss fights that just aren't as solid. I don't know. There's there's some issues, but again, this is hard. It's like picking your favorite kid. You just pick the you just pick it, just pick it in the Super Mario World. But then when they're both successful kids, like they're both like cool kids, it's not like the third kid. You know oh, it's not I mean? like Kevin. Yeah. Okay. Uh, number two, Uncharted two or Uncharted four? Oh man. Um. I think I have to go four. Yeah, me too. But I've, it's well, back to that argument I always make about the Uncharted games and s similar games. Like it is like, it's cheating. Like, yeah. it, it, you know what I mean? Like, as we go, and this is what we always made the argument about with Uncharted 2 and Uncharted 3, right? If Uncharted 3 had come before Uncharted it's a wrong 2. wrong argument, but. Whatever. Yeah. Don't worry about it. If maybe 5G just would have given Uncharted yeah. 2 a 10, like it deserved as well. Anyways, uh, but it's like Uncharted 4 is the payoff to all those games. Maybe if I. If it was a stand. Even if it was standalone, I think I feel even like more I would say than that, Uncharted I think 4. standalone just. It, it, 
is solid. It's really fucking solid. Yeah. It's very well paced. Mega Man 2 or Mega Man 3? 2. Yeah, I don't have it. Soundtrack alone. Okay, cool. I got, yeah, 2. 3 is so great. That, oh, man. It, that, it is hard. That is hard, but I, I think 2. Resident Evil 2 or Resident Evil 4? Oh, Resident Evil 4. 4. Yeah, 4, okay. yeah. That's an easy one. Although well, 2, 2 is... I love 2. Tank control sucked. But that's, that's true. But yeah. I love... Resident Evil 2 is what Resident Evil should be. Zombies in a city. Characters you care about. Sure. It's that is Resident Evil at its fucking core. So I love that. But yeah, no, four four is fucking one of the best games of all time. A link to the past or Ocarina of Time? Oh, Link to the Past. <laughs> Ocarina of Time. That's man. so easy. Have you beat a Link to the Past? No. Yeah. A Link to the Past is, I think, the easy answer. Yeah. I love Ocarina, but I think Ocarina has been absolutely beat with uh Link to the Past. Well, I I mean with Link to the Past, but even in three D times, like Ocarina of Time was so fucking amazing for for when it came out. And yeah. I mean, it, it still is amazing. Still is fucking amazing. But I mean, Wind Waker has faults, which I can't say make it better than Ocarina. But yeah. it's I see it. I'm like, oh, that you can improve upon certain aspects of it. So it's like Ocarina is probably not even in my top three. You're crazy. You're crazy. Especially you're now being. the Breath of the Wild came out, which is which beat Link to the Past, which I can't believe. Mm-mm. Ocarina is still at the top of my list. But again, I came to the game late. And then number six, E.T. or Superman 64. Superman 64. All I these mean, garbage ass Atari games. Yeah. Come on now. At yeah, least Superman 64 games. had flying and fog. Thanks for being awesome each and every day, even the weekends when you aren't recording. That was stressful. Nerd EXP. Thank you, Nerd EXP. That was a good one. Um, Zach W. Carpenter wrote into kindoffunny.com slash KFGD and says, has anyone else noticed that Sony is highlighting game developers on the PSN? This week, there was a page focused on Tim Schafer and the games he is well known for. Further, it then suggested games that are similar to Tim's style that people could possibly or would possibly want to purchase. Is this a sign that Sony is starting to wake up and have better curation on their store? Thanks for all you do, Zach W. Carpenter. Uh, I saw that. They had a few, a few different people up there picking their games. You could go and jump in and click on their scene and see what Tim's recommended or whoever's recommended it's a cool idea uh i mean i don't know if it's if them starting to wake up or if this is a nice idea i'd love to see more of it i'd love to see it go but it's also like promoting it's weird because i know i re- i saw it in the playstation store i thought a couple weeks ago and then the blog just put up a post from tim mm. about it which was interesting but i'd love to, i love that kind of stuff i think they should reach out to like personalities like us and ign and all those people and be like here's brian altano's things and like yeah. why not you know what i mean they have all the verified users now on psn they admit that there's, there's bigger user base right that it's bigger than just playstation i think they should reach out and do that absolutely yeah i think it's a great idea and it there's no bad with that no I mean, it'd be a great way too of um promoting playstation now too mm. if it was here's my thing and like you can get this one to play right now on your playstation 4 through playstation now cool. but that's me putting on my business hat alex king writes in with something so many of you have written in about so he's gonna get all the credit but um, this question gets added every day it's just re- it's never been read before alex king says you have talked a lot about people sleeping on uncharted the lost legacy but i submit that everyone is even more so sleeping on Hellblade. Hellblade comes out August 8th by an independent studio doing something truly big and new. It's a PS4 and PC, I believe, exclusive that has a new trailer to date. What are your thoughts on this game? What are your thoughts on why this game isn't getting more attention and how games like this, independent and single player, can gain more buzz, which multiplayer games gain by allowing early access to them like PUBG? Tim, does Hellblade do anything for you? I am looking up the trailer right now okay. because it sounds familiar and I remember being excited about it. You want me to give you the, the rundown oh, on it? Oh, it's Heavenly Sword. Exactly. Yes. This is Ninja Theory, the people who did Heavenly Sword, the people who did Enslave, the people who did DMC coming out with this new one, Hellblade, that obviously is a play on Heavenly Sword. It is that exactly what you think. Single player, action combat, running through, slicing stuff up. There's this weird, uh, you can see text and like use this weird little system to do stuff. It looks cool when you see it. It also looks, don't, punch me in the face a little generic yeah. you know what i mean hey here's this action guy doing it i think it's not getting as much credit building up for it and i would assume because i haven't seen previews for it i haven't seen people out there playing it and i think near fucking destroyed that when they came out right everybody mm. knew when near was coming and granted coming from square enix a different publisher everybody knew near was coming that's the action game people were talking about people were talking about neo there was all these different things Hmm. I'm not saying we've had our fill of, hey, here's this action-y game that looks hard and kind of has a Souls vibe to it because that's what some of the combat looks like. It is action. It's more action. I'm not saying yeah, it is yeah, Souls. Yeah. Neo, near different games. Yeah. One's more Dark Souls. One's more... Exactly. But I, you know what I'm cry. saying? I think if you had those itches, I feel like they've been scratched. Yeah. 
I also feel like those are the type of itches that are never fully sure. scratched, right? Like do you, those players want those type of games on a monthly basis. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, so I, I think it's great. I mean, it excites me. I also like the idea that it's a smaller title, like, cause th- some of those games get a little bit long in the tooth. So the idea of it being, I remember last time we were talking about, it, I think it was like a seven hour experience. I'm like, fuck yeah. Yeah. Fuck totally, yeah. totally into that. You all about that one? That sounds great. I'm excited for it now. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to look, I'm, I'm going to be interested to see what the reviews say about it. I mean, that that's the thing is like the reviews are really going to be telling on whether or not I'm actually interested in playing this game today. We're doing kind of funny games cast. Uh, topic of the show is what are we playing the rest of the year? Yeah. And I assembled my spreadsheet of everything I want to play. And we're at that point where it's like, if the review's like, it's all right, I don't have time for it. Like, I just don't have time. There's too much shit playing right now. Yeah. You know what I mean? If you're a patreon.com slash kind of funny person, you can watch us record the games cast live today. And if you're not going to watch it live, we're sorry. It's going to be up a little bit late for Patreon people. Just how the cards shook out this week. Let's see. Where do I want to go when I got another question? Final question of the week comes from at an Alex Ander 50. It's. Alexander, but he puts at the it's Alexander today a post from PUBG subreddit made it to the front page a player was banned for seven days after being accused of stream sniping i.e. screen watching a popular streamer what's your stance on stream sniping is it just a risk streamers have to deal with with a part of their trade or should it be a bannable offense and then he puts the source in there this is a developing thing before we came on here it fun excuse me I think I finally saw it pop on Kotaku or whatever yeah who knows if he really got banned for that reason. The, the subreddit post was, hey, my friend got banned after he killed this guy after saying he was a fan. And then he had li- links out to the videos of how it all happened. I'm not, we're not getting into the weeds of that. But in general, stream sniping sucks. <laughs> it does. It does suck. But there, I think it's weird of it being a bannable offense. Yeah? Yeah. It's, it's like, cheating. It, but I mean, it's just, it's, it's out there, right? Like, the, there's, I don't know. I, I guess... The the cheating aspect makes it interesting. I feel like a, like when you're just playing with your playing online, it's not like it's a uh, oh man, I, you know what? My whole argument's falling apart as I'm My- trying to make it. Like if if it was like a organized events, like this is like esports, then it's just like yeah, of course not. But when you're just playing at home or whatever, like why does it matter? But then as I say that, it's like well, people are ranking up, and there are yeah. levels there. There is a, a competitiveness to that that. You have an unfair advantage if you're doing that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's the thing of... The problem is, and I think what the, you're going to find with this Reddit thing, is how do you prove that's what yeah. happened? You know what I mean? That's the issue about it, where to bring it, of course, to possibly game of the year. A lot of people are putting buzz around it. Friday the 13th. Uh, over on the Friday the 13th subreddit the other day, some kid posted a PSN conversation he was having with somebody who was like, um, you know, he was. it was somebody who was being a dick to him in the game. I guess they already had bad blood. And so then he thinks he's like, I, I just, I just, uh, PSN message Jason to tell him where you're at. He's going to come fucking kill you. And he's like, I'm going to fucking report you for screen, screen sniping. Like, he's like, oh, I was just kidding. It's like, that would make me really upset. Like part of that, that, that we want to do a Friday the 13th, uh, party mode. Right. And like, I was racking my brain of a way to not ha- to figure out how, cause we all have to be in the same room. I want to be Jason. You're all in the other room. Right. Yeah. And it's like, well, how can I do it where you guys can't talk to each other? Like, unless you have the walkie talkies. Cause part of that game is I have the walkie talkie or I have the perk for the walkie talkie, blah, blah, blah. Cause otherwise you're all going to be like, I have this, I have that go there, do this. And it's mm. like, it makes the game so much easier than when you are just running around fucking around that like, for games like PUBG, for games like Friday the 13th, for anything that's competitive, where there is an element of, we're going to camp, we're going to do that. Yeah, this is fucking bullshit. It breaks the game. It breaks the experience. But how do you fucking prove that? I don't know. Unless somebody else is running and uh, you're being stream sniped by someone who else is streaming so that you can see in their chat that they're like, I'm going to go watch this stream and go do this. Huh? Yeah. No, oh, man. It's, it's complicated. It's icky. Yeah, it's very icky. Just don't do it. Don't Just be do nice it. people. All right. Can't yeah. everybody be nice. Tim. Yes. It's time to squad up. Hell yeah. Never roll uh, alone. William Cosgrove needs a friend. If you didn't know squad ups where you write into kind of funny.com slash KFGD. You give us your username on whatever platform you're playing on. You tell us what game you need help for. We read here and then the kind of funny best friends and community rally to you and help you. William Cosgrove need help. He says need help <laughs> uh, over on overwatch on the PC. If you want to find him on this, he is, I don't know how any of this shit works, but it's Nemesis 2112 hashtag 1251 PC gaming. William says, I'm a high silver ranked player that is stuck in the hell of trying to ri- rise in the ranks while playing with random people who won't adapt or switch heroes to counter the enemy teams. I just want to play with some fun people, have a good time and get the most out 
of my favorite game to play over the past year or more. So everybody, go find William. He is Nemesis2112, hashtag 1251, all one jumble of letters and numbers on the PC for Overwatch. Tim, are you ready for your wrong already? Uh, Because we got one more. We got a rotating segment if you want me to toss it in there. Oh, I'm ready. I'm ready. It's up to you. You Do it right now. You bust out your wrong. Okay. Um, this comes from the, again. The, I'm just reading this for the first time. So kind of com slash you're wrong. Don't fucking editorial. It's a bit more editorialization, ah! but, but I, I want to put it out there. Uh, this comes from Luke Fetner, 11. Okay. Just a little information about the first news story about the lawsuit. As a legal scholar, oh, there's you. and that's the thing. He's not telling us okay. we're wrong, okay. but he's like, okay, that's fine. This is good. Giving us some real shit. Uh, there's little to no way this will actually reach a court or even circulate in any capacity. It's obviously more complicated. I'm not going to get into the nitty gritty here for obvious reasons, but given the circumstances, this will end in an underwhelming thud. So cool. Okay. So I wasn't just talking out of my ass. I talked to my ass, but sure, 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 sure. Mm. I'm feeling time while Tim reads through your wrong. Oh, were we wrong no, about these anything? Are not, whatever. Or Trevor Starkey just trying to get his name read by yeah, nope. cherry picking things and saying Greg didn't say the in this official title. We don't need you guys to add information. You know what I mean? Yeah. Unless it's like relevant. Sure. I'm telling you, you you're done. It's done. It's fine. It's done. You can keep reading. I'll move on to the next one. All right. Okay. If any, any, any else, you're wrong. Rotating segment is called who the fuck is buying GTA five. If you remember yesterday, Andrea and I talked about the fact that GTA five still fucking selling, killing it in the UK, best selling physical copy of a game over there for this year. We always see it on the NPD numbers. And so I asked the question, who the fuck is still buying GTA five right in? If you see this and many of you did, I'm going to start with Rye dog V Rye dog V says, hello games, daily, awesome people just wanted to chime in regarding yesterday's conversation about GTA five as a seller of games and games hardware. I see GTA five come across my sales counter almost daily. Crazy as it sounds, the game normally still retails for $60 new, but will go on sale for 30 or 40 about once a month. What's more is GTA 5 remains a top pre-owned title as well, which obviously doesn't even count towards the official numbers. I think one of the key factors has to be the fact that it is a multi-gen title that has remained relevant with the help of online play. Believe it or not, m- believe it or not, but many believe it or not, but so many people are still just transitioning to current gen systems, and GTA 5 is a frequent title attached with new hardware purchases. Whether it's they know they are just going to get a little whether no, they are just getting a great title or they want to experience the exclusive features available for Xbox One and PlayStation 4. So many people repurchase the game for their new system. That, and of course, as previously stated, kids are turning 17 every day. Wiki emoticon. Thanks for the great content and keep it coming. <laughs> P.S. I pre-ordered Agents of Mayhem over a month ago, so put me on the whiteboard. Okay. <laughs> Have you been following this, Tim? No, but I mean, it's a... Uh... So it's an accurate question. We, who the fuck cares about Agents of Mayhem is another question. And so as we, what happened is Angry Dad 82 wrote in asking, like, why is nobody talking about Agents of Mayhem? And we're like, well, because nobody really cares about it. It looks really generic. And then I was like, if anybody cares about Agents of Mayhem, please write in. One person hit me up on Twitter and said, hey, you didn't, you didn't even have the concept of the game right. And I was like, oh, very apologetic. And then the next day I had two people write in about Agents of Mayhem. One was Angry Dad again. And then the second was some other guy. So now, though, we're adding Rye Dog V. Okay. This is Deep Silver? Yeah. Okay, Deep Silver. Deep Silver, Volition. They're going to be well on your way. Sales. And don't try to just write in now and say you care about it because you missed your chance. I asked you all week to write in if you cared about Agents of Mayhem. I'm not going to put up 30 names now because you want to see your name on the whiteboard. You missed your chance, but Rye Dog V didn't. Maybe we'll get 12 more. Uh, the final thing from You're Wrong is from Vane. While Sony didn't provide an explanation in the official statement slash email, they put out many they put out to many news outlets have had the following response when asked for a statement. Quote, we are changing the pricing to reflect various market conditions while enabling us to continue providing exceptional value to our members. Excellent. Cool. They did a, a message that needs to be on all of the things. Yeah. Messaged to your people in your letter about why yep. you're hey, we're changing your prices and this is why. Some additional info on the PlayStation Store's curation. Launching today, May 23rd, 2017, the creators is an attempt by Sony to get curation on the PlayStation Store, only instead of turning to, quote, influencers, they've asked people responsible for actually making the games to do it instead. Great idea. The initial lineup of creators includes PlayStation boss Shuhei Yoshida, yeah. the development team behind Final Fantasy XV, Media Molecule co-founder Sioban Reddy, and Cappy. Oh, Cappy. 
Uh, one more thing on this GTA thing, because a lot of you wrote in. Thank you very much. Phil wrote in and said, hey, guys and gals, just wanted to respond to Greg's question regarding GTA 5. As a 33-year-old, I grew up with the NES, SNES, and N64 and loved games, but mostly dropped out of the gaming world when I went to college. It wasn't until I started hearing about all of the awesome games coming out in the last couple years, parentheses, and finally had a stable job with little disposable income, that I decided to get a PlayStation 4 more or less on a whim, despite never having owned a, pr a previous PlayStation. So, if you're a long, long gamer returning to the fold looking for games to jump into what games are going to be drawn to for me gta 5 was an obvious pick as i was familiar with the series and the hook drive around and cause chaos is an easy sell plus it got such good reviews so yeah yeah there you go. i mean I, i'm sh just as shocked as you are that it sells as well as it does consistently month it's the after consistently month. like i system get that the game's great system, but the fact like, that yeah it just keeps going and never stops like hey more power to you rockstar yeah now finish fucking red dead Ladies and gentlemen, this has been Kind of Funny Games Daily for Friday, July 28th, 2017. Thank you for watching. Remember, I need you to be part of the show. Go to kindoffunny.com slash KFGD. Get your questions read. Uh, somebody asked earlier if they submit a question, and I didn't read it in the thing. If they submit questions and they don't get read, should they resubmit them? Yes. It's a daily show, so every day I kind of go back through the last 24 hours of questions. Lots of times you make it to the sheet, but you don't make it to the show. Questions about the day's news often get read in the segment, so that's a pretty good way to do it. Remember, we're, we record it live, twitch.tv, such kind of funny games. You have Amazon Prime. You have Twitch Prime. Give us your free subscription, please. Uh, you can go get it on YouTube.com slash kind of funny games, where there's a pat upon Let's Play, pat upon stream on Monday morning before the morning show as pat well. Pat-a-bone, pat 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 pawn, pawn, pat a pawn. And then it's up on iTunes and all the other podcast services around the globe. Rate us, share us. Please subscribe everywhere you can. It helps us out a lot. And Tim, yeah, I think that's it. Oh, okay. I'll see you in a little bit to record the games cast right here. Yeah. Catch on patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames. 3 p.m. Pacific time. YouTube next week. But until next time, it's been our pleasure to serve you.